Welcome to the Wacky World of Work. I'm James Tarani, your host. Today on the program, we have a very special guest. His name is Jeff B. Cohn, and he's a transactional attorney who is the co-founder of the Beverly Hills, California-based law firm Cohn Gardner. And you should remember him from his child acting days when he played Chunk in the film The Goonies. Peace. And peace. In fact, I think it's the 30th anniversary this coming Sunday, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Of that the is release. right. It's a long time ago. I had much more hair. Uh, the, the world was young. The world was young, yes. Very good. Um, so what we'll be talking about is his new book. It's called The Dealmaker's Ten Commandments, and uh, he's going to be our Moses and take us on a tour of this little book here today. That's right. That's right. So uh, let's start with the book. And uh, I know it's written kind of in a Hollywood style, but it seems like the tips and the commandments are applicable to pretty much any situation. No, thank you. Yeah, that, that's that's how I wrote it. Um, I mean, I think kind of the for me the big through line of the book uh, is that success is life on your own terms, and the Dealmaker's Ten Commandments helps the reader figure out what those terms are and then how to get them. So big big picture, it's you know you know what is success to me, and then how do you get it. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as kind of the more you know micro, it's it's my ten commandments for uh, you know negotiating great deals, managing your time, and handling crisis at the highest level without losing your soul. <laughs> I would not want to lose not my soul in a negotiation. Not easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so uh, some people say when you're negotiating, you shouldn't blink, but you kind of say you shouldn't oink, as in there is no pig wrestling. Can you explain what that means? It's a great question. That is commandment five. That is Dealmaker's <laughs> commandment five. Uh, no pig wrestling. And you never wrestle a pig because you get dirty and the pig enjoys it. Uh, <laughs> so commandment five is about opponent selection and battle selection. Um, you know, combat is honor. Combat is an exercise among equals. Uh, so you have to be very careful in choosing who your enemies are. Uh, and especially as you gain more and more power, more and more success, uh, there's more little piggies who want to come out and wrestle you. So you have to be very careful about opponent selection and also battle selection. Uh, Genghis Khan said only a fool fights a battle he knows he cannot win. So in that, in the Commandment 5, I talk about what's a good enemy, what's a bad enemy, and if you can't choose your enemy, how can you how you can shape them and make them better. So, Jeff, when you're uh, negotiating, do you think of it as a win-win for both parties, or is it kind of like you got to beat the other guy over the head and I got to win, and uh, whatever the other person gets, the other person gets? It's, it's interesting. It's a complex question uh, because it's very dependent upon the facts. Um, the big idea, it's Dealmaker's Commandment 4, is that everyone is on the same side, their own. So you have to kind of go through the transaction or the business situation, say, okay, what does each party, uh, you know, believe to be in their best interest? And the second uh, element of it is, um, it's actually one of the questions I ask the, uh, the the reader to ask themselves when they're reading the book, which is, do you have an abundance mentality or a scarcity mentality? An abundance mentality means that there's we can all get rich together. There's plenty for everyone. A scarcity mentality is that, oh, there's only a certain amount of revenue or profit or whatever to go around. And in general, if you can have an abundance mentality, you're going to be better off. But in certain transactions, a scarcity mentality is appropriate. So what is the biggest mistake uh, people make when they're negotiating? Um, I would go to, and I would say this is in business generally. Uh, you know, keeping in mind that for my book, for the for the Dealmaker's Ten Commandments, uh, I start the book off with a warning, uh, and the warning is a quote from George Fuller, which is, "Good and great are seldom the same man." Uh, the book is about being great; it's not about being good. It's two separate ideas, and I go on to say that the tactics that I advocate are for professional life, not for personal life. They're for it's you know it's for business. It's not for lovers and family and, and puppies and things like that. Very harmful to be used in those in those scenarios. Um, I think kind of the big mistake people make uh, in in business uh, and you know negotiating specifically is, is which is basically I deal with it in the first dealmaker's first commandment, uh, which is it is better to be feared than loved which is from uh, a great uh, philosopher named Niccolo Machiavelli that I, I base a lot of the book upon. Um, He's a prince of a man, by the way. 
he 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 is the, well he wrote the prince yes. he wrote the prince uh of course of course um and uh basically in business uh you you to be a, to be a deal maker you want things that you can control you want to create a situation where you have power uh and power comes through control and the way you gain that control is through fear if the other side is afraid of you you can wield punishment to change their actions in a way that is preferable for you what we're taught basically all of our lives is that you know it is better to be loved than feared uh you know when you're in school your teacher should love you so so you get a good grade when you're at home if your parents love you then you'll get a treat after dinner uh when you're in in college when your professors to to love you so you'll get good grades then you you'll get a good job then your boss will love you and then what happens then and that's where the linear portion goes crazy because the odds of working for one company as a loyal employee your entire career is basically non-existent in our current economy um so you know when trying to be loved fails and you get downsized through no fault of your own just because of macroeconomic you know reasons they they can get someone 20 years younger at 50% of the rate to do work at 60% proficiency <laughs> when that happens and being loved no longer works you know you're lost so that's why i kind of I mean, you know, my book, even if some people aren't comfortable with the tactics, I think merely as self-defense, you need to know what the other side and in, and in business generally how, you know, parties work. Sure. So a uh, total hypothetical situation for you. Say you're an 11 year old kid and you're negotiating with these monsters. Let's call them, I don't know, the Fratellis. And uh, they, they capture you and you want to get free and they want to get information from you. So how would you handle that deal? Well, uh, Fratelli is interesting. Uh, you know, again, I guess trying to put Chunk's hand in the blender. I mean, that's that's prototypical. You know, commandment one: it is better to be feared than loved. Because uh, what's scarier than you know having someone attempt to put your hand in a blender? Uh, so I would say, you know, look, Fratelli's are textbook. You know, I got to give them credit for that. You know, they're they're mean dudes, but uh, but hey, you know, fear than love. They got it. Fratelli's got it down. All right, so my brother told me I wouldn't be able to come up with a question about the truffle shuffle, so I had to come up with right. something. So okay, when you were uh, reading the script for the first time and you saw truffle shuffle in it, what was going through your mind? Did you have no clue? Did Richard Donner have to pull up his shirt and say, this is how you do it? Uh, no, I mean, the you know, as a, as a fat kid, the last thing you want to do is like show a bunch of strangers your fat belly. I mean, that's why, you know, as a fat kid, when you go to the... You know, when I would go to the swimming pool, you wear a T-shirt over, you know, uh, etc., because you're, you know, embarrassed. But uh, willing to sacrifice a little bit of dignity, you know, to become a cultural icon in the long run, it's probably worth it. So ultimately, <laughs> a good call, I'd say. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Jeff B. Cohn for joining me today on the Wacky thank World you. of Work. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can check out his book, The Deal Makers: Ten Commandments. On Amazon now, and Kindle, and Audible. So go get it. You want to hear my gorgeous voice for four hours? Read this book. You get, you can download that. So, and there you go. And uh, if you have a question or comment about this program, you can email me at editors at workforce.com, or you can always tweet to me at, at @workforcejames. Until next time, like I always say, whatever works. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs>